नमस्ते वेलकम टू दिस चैनल डॉक्टर ए आर एम्स केमिस्ट्री फ्रेंड्स लास्ट टाइम वी हैव सीन स्टीरियो केमिस्ट्री टुडे वी विल सी द क्रिस्टल फील्ड थ्योरी इन केस ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स सो दिस थ्योरी कैन बी कंसीडर्ड फॉर स्पेसिफिकली द स्क्वायर प्लेनर कॉम्प्लेक्सेस टेट्राहेड्रल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस एंड ऑक्टाहेड्रल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस एज वेल एज स्क्वायर पिरामिडल complexes before that we have to see the first point that is what are the limitations of vbt because before going for crystal field theory we should remember or <coughs> recall the limitations of vbt so we will see here the limitations of vbt this theory <coughs> that is uh vbt it is based on it is purely uh, covalent it considers purely covalent nature of a bonding it does not consider any amount of ionic bonding or any other kind of bonding so it is purely covalent uh <coughs> in nature means it uh, uh, recommends or considers 100% covalent characters 100% covalent characters of the bond in <coughs> complexes or in other cases where we want to apply it second is <coughs> it fails to apply uh <coughs> Uh, or explain uh, why the 4d orbitals are participating in hybridization instead of 3d orbitals in some cases even though there is large difference in the energy between the 3d orbitals and 4d orbitals so the 3d orbitals and 4d orbitals have a large difference so apart from this in some cases or in some complexes uh, instead of using 3d the 4d is used for hybridization as a result of which we consider or we can uh, have the various types of uh, magnetic characters that is high spin low spin nature of complex where similarly uh, paramagnetic diamagnetic characters are also governed on the basis of what is the nature of this uh, use of or occupation of 4d or 3d for hybridization for example in case of chromium in case of chromium 3 plus <coughs> there is only one <coughs> orbital there is only one at electron here and that is a uh, d3 configuration so this is a d3 configuration of metal ion d3 configuration of metal ion where d2 sp3 hybridization is observed d2 sp3 hybridization is observed <coughs> so here uh, only two orbitals of the 3d Two orbitals of the 3D. So D contains five D orbitals. Out of this, only two orbitals are used. And in addition to this, there are P orbitals. One is 3P and 2D. So these two D are from this 3D orbitals are used. So this gives the decrease P3 hybridization. <coughs> Uh, but in case of if you take another example that is d5 case of d3 plus <coughs> here in such case for example if you take the complex if e cl6 3 minus so this is a low spin complex 
This is a low spin complex. And the type of hydration is D2 sp3. D2 sp3. <coughs> so see in here also the D orbitals used are of this 3D. So energy of this e energy of this 3D is lower, energy of 4D is much higher. So even after this large energy difference, instead of using the orbitals from 3D, sometimes 4D orbitals are also used. <coughs> and uh, in case of another example, if you take the Fe F6 3 minus. So here you will find that the type of hybridization is sp3 d2. So here this d orbital usually is 4d. This d orbitals occupied are used for hybridization is 4d. And because of this, the complex is high spin. High spin. And therefore it is more paramagnetic. So such type of complexes in which the inner D orbitals, 3D orbitals are used. Sometimes the complex may be diamagnetic. So such type of behavior uh, is not explained by PBT. If we consider another complex. That is Ni2 plus Ni2 plus. It is paramagnetic complex and tetrahedral and octahedral. So it may be tetrahedral or octahedral. It is paramagnetic. So this and nickel 2 plus it is having D8 configuration. There are 8 electrons in this comp in nickel complexes. So in that case the <coughs> complex is tetrahedral or octahedral. And <coughs> the diamagnetic complex is a square planar. So these are tetrahedral and octahedral are paramagnetic. Whereas the square planar, square planar complex is diamagnetic. Diamagnetic. So such type of exponential uh, 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 special difference or some uh, special behavior is not explained by DBT. VPT also uh, explains the stereochemistry and magnetic properties to fundamental level or at basic level only. It cannot explain the detailed magnetic properties and stereochemical properties of a complex. Further, this theory cannot <coughs> explain uh, or cannot provide any prediction or interpretation of electronic spectroscopic properties of a or a kinetic inertness uh, which is a characteristic of low speed d6 configuration so in case of d6 configuration means where there are metal ion contains six electrons so in that case we find that the electronic spectroscopic properties of kinetic uh, inertness is observed and which is not explained by VPT. Similarly, VBT fails to uh, explain because it provides, it uh, gives misleading uh, explanation, misleading information regarding high spin and low spin complexes. It cannot explain uh, why certain ligands are associated with the formation of high spin or low spin complexes. Uh, in earlier example, we have seen that is in FeX6 3 minus and FeCN6 3 minus. So these are two different complexes, but in this case, 
we find that this is a high spin and this is a low spin complex. So there is difference between ligands. Means we can see that some ligands are associated with a low spin complex, whereas some ligands are associated with high spin complex. So such type of uh, interpretation is not provided by this solubility. <coughs> So it makes necessary to go for or opt for some other theory or other concepts. And that is essential here as crystal field theory. So in crystal field theory, we know that the ligand, uh, the complex contains central metal ion of positive charge. Whereas the ligands are around it, ligands are <coughs> present around it. So in case of such square planar or in octahedral complex, we can show this uh, in this view. So this is octahedral, this is square. So ligands are <coughs> here represented, means we are using here the ligands as their electrons, which we are using here, are considering the electrons of ligands, and these are providing negative charge. So this negative charge is shown here. So negative charge represents electrons of, of ligands, and positive charge represents the electron deficiency of metal ion. So this gives, this develops the crystal field. What is this is called crystal field. In this case, the crystal field is square planar. In this case, the crystal field is octahedral. <coughs> so <coughs> this crystal field theory is electrostatic model in which the ligand electrons are considered as point charge. Point charge <coughs> and this develops the electric field. So we can consider this in case of <coughs> energy level diagram. So this can be explained by easily using energy level diagram. So this is this can consider this as an energy level or energy axis. And here we can show the d orbitals, 5d orbitals. So these are 3d orbitals. So these are in isolated isolated metal ion metal ion means there is no approaching ligand or we can say the ligands are at infinite distance. That is, ligands are at infinite distance from metal ion. So the field is degenerate, means all electrons. All our metals are at the same energy level. So these are called degenerate orbitals. Degenerate orbitals. But when ligands are approaching closer and closer, or when they are approaching, uh, <coughs> so that some electric field is interacting. So that when the ligands are interacting with metal uh, field, then it is called a spherical. Means electrons of ligands are circulating or uh, encircling the metal ion. Then the energy of this d orbital is increasing. We can show that this energy is increasing, and we get the Three, three orbitals, 3D orbitals, 
which are also degenerate degenerate and they are in spherical <coughs> ligand field spherical ligand field or crystal field you know in <coughs> So here, crystal field <coughs> means ligands are uh, approaching closer, but they are not actually bound. But the electric field means the orbital uh, energy is increased due to certain uh, or limited amount of repulsive forces developed between the metal line and ligands. In addition to this, when the ligands are approaching much closer or at the required bond distance at the essential bond distance when the elect means point negative charges are approaching much closer at internuclear distance so that the interactions are taking place between the ligands and the means electrons of ligands and electrons of uh, this metal ion. Then the crystal field means the d orbitals are split into two types. Crystal field <coughs> are split into two types. So this is very center. Very center means center of the energy level. Then <coughs> some orbitals are moving down. Means uh, the 3D orbitals which are pointing in the direction of the D orbitals. The electrons of ligands which are pointing in the direction of certain axis or in the direction of orbitals of metal ion they will repel each other and as a result their energy increases. For example, the d orbitals which are like say this d so two orbitals will go up in energy and two orbitals will go down in energy. So the d orbitals which are here are d d2 and d x2 minus y2. Here the d orbitals which are lower in energy are dxy, dyz and dzx. So you will find that these d orbitals are pointing in the direction of z axis. So the ligands which are approaching in the direction of z axis will repel these orbitals or electrons present in these orbitals. As a, result, as a result of this, their energy goes up. So their energy rises. So energy rises. And uh, in this case also, the dx2 minus y2 orbitals of metal ion are pointing in the direction of x and y axis. So the energy also increases. But these orbitals are present or lying in the direction in between the x and y axis. So the orbitals, four orbitals, <coughs> four lobes of these orbitals are pointing in between the x and y axis. Similarly, these are of four uh, uh, lobes of these orbitals are pointing in the direction between x, y and z axis. Similarly, these orbitals have lobes pointing in the direction of z and x axis. As a result of this, the there is less repulsion or there is in a lower repulsion. So the repulsion between the these orbitals means electrons and electrons of ligands are lowered. As a result of this their energy is lowered. So we can show this as say delta. Uh, so if this is octahedral film. It is delta O. So the energy is increased means it is plus. Here energy is decreased means energy is 
minus. So delta O minus. So the amount depends upon the type of hybridization. Means type of hybridization is as well as the crystal field. So for octahedral field, the crystal field difference between this. So we will see again in detail in the other <coughs> next point. So first of all, we have to imagine that the energy <coughs> is decreasing. So the net energy difference between these two is delta O. The total energy difference between the these two orbitals and these two orbitals is <coughs> called delta O. That is crystal field energy difference. So <coughs> uh, we have to remember here that these orbitals are lying between certain axis x and y this is y and z we see here but these two orbitals have lobes in the direction of x and y axis as a result or z axis as a result they are repelled from each other their energy rises and energy of this, these orbitals is lower so this is called crystal field splitting so we will discuss each type of crystal field splitting depending upon various crystal fields in the next lecture. So till then goodbye see you next time. Please subscribe to this channel. Please, please uh, <coughs> press the bell icon and like button also. So thank you very much.